In the last step then, we got a blueprint door that will open and close when our player approaches it or walks away from it. But it just happens immediately and it's a bit confusing. It kind of looks like the door disappears. So in this step, we're going to use a timeline to make this happen smoothly. Okay, so we need to have the blueprint door open. So if it's not already open, open it up. I've still got mine open up here. So we're gonna go into it like that. Okay, so we've got it opening and we've got it closing and it's happening here. But what we wanna do now is get this to happen smoothly over about a second, maybe a little bit less than a second. And what I'm gonna do is we'll just do it on the opening of the door first. So I'm just gonna move this way down here because we need to put some more stuff in here. And what we're also gonna do is I'm just gonna set that back to zero. And then I'm gonna right click on this new location and I'm gonna do what's called split the struct pin. And what that does is it now gives me three inputs, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z, instead of just having one for all three, which gives us a good way of changing only the Z, which is what we want. Let me just, okay. So what we need to do now is create a new timeline. So I'm gonna right click and type timeline. And it's the one at the bottom that says add timeline. There's lots of other timeline things here, but it's add timeline. It's got a little clock icon next to it. There it is. And I'm going to call this door movement. Like that. No spaces, because that would be bad. Here it is. So this is what we're going to do. And at the moment, this doesn't really do anything. We need to double click on it to open it, to give it some values. So let's double click. It opens here and there's nothing going on yet. So we need to add a track. So there's the track. We're going to add a float track. I'm going to call the float track door movement. Lovely. And I'm going to set the length of this to, I think 0 0.75 is a good amount of time for this. Perfect. Now, how this is going to work is we're going to have two values, one at the beginning, one at the end, and we're going to change the values over time. So I'm going to right click somewhere in here and we're going to add a key, which is essentially a keyframe. If you know anything about animation, we use these a lot in animation. And then we get a time value and a value value for that. And I want to set both of these to zero. And that says at the beginning of the timeline, I want the value to be zero. Nice. And then at the end of this, I'm going to right click again. We're going to add another key. So this one's going to be at 0 0.75, which will put it to the end. And the value I would actually like to be 200, which is how much we move the door by, if you remember. I'm then just gonna, because we can't see this happening, I'm gonna just press the F key. And now we can see that over time, we've got this linear line that starts at zero and goes to 200, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our event graph, which is just up here, look next to the door movement. And this is now ready to do some stuff for us. Okay, so once we have figured out that it is the third person character overlapping our door, we're going to want to play something from the start, which is gonna be the door movement. And then what we can do is take this update node here and that's going to get the set relative location doing some stuff and the door movement here look is going to go into new location z like that so that's now going to make this happen over 0 0.75 seconds so let's test that out we're going to compile save go back to our level and we're going to run over to the door and you can see that now opens smoothly. Now the problem is if we walk away, it just reappears. So we're gonna to need to reverse what we've done there for when the player ends the overlap. So let's do that. Now we can be a little bit clever with this. So what we're gonna do is move this over here. I'm gonna split the struct pin again. And what we can do, if you notice on this one here, there is the option to reverse or reverse from the end, which is ideally what we wanna do. So we're gonna copy this timeline. So Control C and Control V. And this time, instead of playing from the start, we're gonna play from the end or reverse from the end, play backwards. And then we're gonna update into here and our door movement's gonna go into Z like that. So it's exactly the same, except we're now just reversing it when the overlap ends. So let's now compile and save that and give it a Jolly old test. So we're gonna run over to the door. The door opens. I like to think it makes a 
sort of noise. But we'll add, we'll add audio later. And then we'll walk away. Oh, and it closes. It's like it was meant to be. Okay, there's only one final thing I want to change in this step. And I just want the animations to be a little bit smoother. Uh, it's a subtle effect. But for me, I just like it. So what we'll do is go back into our blueprint. I'm going to double click on my timeline. And we've got this very straight line. And what I'm going to do is right click on the first keyframe. And I'm going to change the tangent or the interpolation from linear to auto. And you'll see you get a nice gradual curve into it. I'm going to do the same at this end. Although I think it's already done, but I'll do it to be safe. There we go. And then that is saved. I'm going to go back into this one as well, because I've now got two versions of this. So we need to make that one auto as well. And I'll just make sure that we've got auto over there. Excellent. Save that. And then let's run over to the door one final time and see what happens. Perfect. So that's now a little bit smoother. Nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just, I'm just going to run out of the door. And you can see that now my character will fall forever. Which is not great in a game. If you have a player accidentally like run through a wall because your collisions are broken, you don't want them just to fall forever. You want some kind of fail safe. So in the next step, that's what we're going to do. Let me just go back into my room. We're going to make it so that when the player leaves the room, that they'll die and the game will be reset. So I will see you in the next step where we'll get that set up. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.